Sean drove his black golf with tinted windows up from Dublin to Jordan for his sister's time birthday. He brought down a present, a silver necklace with Kiva written in, in a love heart and diamonds around it. He had a fresh haircut for his little sister's party. Sean's appearance was sexy, tanned, with piercing blue eyes like the ocean, behind black Louis Vuitton sunglasses. Nice white turkey teeth, fresh from when he went to Turkey. He wore a silver chain around his neck given to him by his dad, which he never took off, against a white t-shirt under a black and neon set tracksuit. He was wearing Harachi black runners and silver Rolex on his sleeve tattooed arm. He pulled into Highfield for the first time in five years. The last time he was walking and this time was in a car. It looks the same as it did five years ago, he thought. The houses were big, well kept and the estate was clean. He said hi Mary to his neighbour as he arrived. The neighbour, out having a fag, recognised him a bit and replied. You've grown up so much. How are you keeping? He went to the door. His mum, Donna, opened to see him. I missed you, she cried with happiness. Outside there was a table covered in sweets, a bouncy castle, a disco dome playing TikTok songs. He gave her the present before everyone came. Kiva was speechless. His mum came out, handed him a cup of tea. How long are you staying? She had brown hair, the same blue eyes as him mid-length hair just below her shoulder, ripped blue jeans, white Alexander McQueen's, Pandora silver rings, a charm bracelet with two kids' names on it. She had a tattoo of Sean and Kiva and a love heart on the inside of her left wrist. At the party, Sean was sitting down talking to his mother while the kids played before they had to go home as it was getting late. His phone rang and he stepped outside for a phone call from his dad's sister. He was confused as to why she was ringing him. Is everything alright? he asked. His auntie Sean had gasped and replied, No, your dad's not well. Calm down. Why? What's happening? He's in hospital. He's getting worse. I don't want to scare you or panic you, but it is probably best that you all come up to visit him. Why? What's happening? There's no time for questions. Come up here as soon as you can. That night after the party and the three of them went up to visit the dad in Bowmount Hospital. Sean was confused and upset because he thought his dad was getting better. But then he went back on a heavier and hid it from him so he wouldn't worry. Sean was angry because he felt like his dad betrayed him. He is being selfish because he went back on the drink and didn't tell him that he was that sick. The dad, Johnny, had been sick for two years with liver disease. Without Sean to watch him, there was no one else, only him. Sean blamed himself because he thought going to live with his dad to distract him from going back to reality of it. When Sean was 13, he started first year in Dublin, away from Drada. His dad's addiction started to get worse, so he had to drop out of school in second year and became his dad's carer. At 16, his dad's friend offered Sean a job on a building site. The dad didn't want Sean to take care of him anymore because he thought Sean was giving up his own life to look after him and he felt bad. Shauna was sitting beside the bed and when she saw them, she got up and gave them all a big hug. Donna was disappointed and upset when she saw Johnny at the fact he went back to the same road he was on. The father was in a small room by himself. The room was dark because it was night time. When they walked in, they seen how miserable he looked hooked up to the jerk. He was sleeping, lying there and skin was yellow from the liver. The dull cream room was dimly lit and the silence was broken by the jerk's beep. There was a big window and the orange curtains pulled across and blue curtains pulled around the bed. A small tally had been torn down with the sound down, faced the bed from the far wall. Quiva never knew anything about her father being an alcoholic. She did not recognise him because he was bloated and had not aged well. She was shocked and started crying. Sean kept it in to hide his emotions from his mother and his sister. Is he going to be okay? He said with a shaky voice. The mother and the daughter sat down to see how he was and Shauna called Sean out to talk to him. 
She explained what was happening. He was upset and angry because he thought that he was getting better. Why did nobody check up on him? Why were you only there for him when he was dying? Where were you when I needed you, when all the responsibilities of looking after him were left to me? I'm sorry I wasn't there when I needed to be. Sean walked back into the room. The father drowsily, with a shaky voice said, I'm happy to see you all together. Donna was trying to be strong for the kids, but she wished she could turn back time to help him and do more to try prevent it. She felt she did the right thing for her family and their safety, but she wished that he could have changed things, not for her, but for the kids. She knew in the end he was always going to be the same. Quiva, because she hadn't got to know her dad, was shocked and emotional, and her mom took her out for a breather. Sean sat down beside him and held his hand. His hand felt cold, shaken and swollen. Why would you do that to us? Sean started crying because he realised his dad is actually dying. I couldn't help myself. Take care of Donna and Quiva for me. He stopped breathing and his heart monitor let out a long... In the moment, it felt like it went on for ages. Doctors and nurses rushed in with Quiva and Donna running in behind. Donna comforted Sean by taking him out of the room. She put her arms around him and sat him down. She told Shauna to go and get him a bottle of water. Five days later, the funeral took place in Bosco Church. Black railings were around the church. Stained windows were high wood roof flanked by dirty wine coloured aisles. It smelt like holy water and incense. Candles were lit beside the altar. A lot more people showed up than expected and the church was almost half full. Some were friends from school, the building sites, Donna's family and a few friends from the pub. Johnny's family was big four brothers and five sisters. All Sean's friends from Dublin and Drada were there. Donna, Quiva and Sean were sitting in the front row and brought up a few things to the front of the coffin. Sean carried up his dad's favourite football jersey. Quiva brought up his most prized watch, rings and chain. Donna placed an old photo of the family at Sean's confirmation on the coffin. At Calvary Graveyard, the family and friends stood at the grave while Johnny's brothers and Sean carried the coffin to the family grave and lowered it in. There were wreaths saying dad, brother and uncle and flowers piled beside the grave. Donna and Quiva were crying. Sean was holding it in behind sunglasses, wearing a white shirt with a black suit, tie and black shoes. His ex, Laura, turned up. She wasn't dressed nicely for a funeral. She was wearing bright clothes like she was going to a party just to annoy him. She was told by Donna that it was all black and white. Donna did not know that the two of them had split up. She was up talking to the man paying her respects. Donna was talking away until Sean approached them. Sean pulled his mum aside to explain that they are not together. Laura knew they were talking about her and meanwhile she pulled a can of Guinness out of her bag and poured a drink on top of the coffin. Sean grabbed her by the wrist and pulled her away from them all towards the exit. They were arguing. While he was talking to her, he realised there was something funny about her eyes. Her pupils were massive. Her jaw was rocking. Sean said, Are you off your face? You're on drugs again. She pulled away from him. No, I'm not. Get your hand off me. Donna walked, away, walked over and says, what's going on? Everyone is standing there watching, shocked. Laura looked over at her. What are you looking at, you mutt? Donna slapped her across the face really hard. Get the fuck out of here. You bleeding mutt. Sean was shocked, but found it funny. 
and he was delighted that his mum had slapped her because he couldn't. Laura fell back with shock to the ground. Donna grabbed her by the scruff and said, don't ever disrespect my family again. Donna straightened herself up and walked over to Kiva. Shauna had taken Kiva and walked away with her before she had seen anything. Shauna and Donna looked at each other without saying anything and walked back to the rest of the family. A hundred people came to the afters in the pheasant function room. It was a big room with white and red tablecloths and a bar against the fire wall. The room was packed and loud with the kids running around. The door at the back was open to the beer garden. Sean was getting a Heineken at the bar and his friend Adam, that he knows since primary school, came up to him. Sean hadn't seen him since he left Drada. Sean was happy but surprised to see him because he hadn't seen him in five years. Adam was wearing a neon set with white reacts. Adam called, him, called Sean to bring him outside to the beer garden to talk to him. How have you been? I'm sorry about your dad. I didn't know what was going on with you and your father. Adam hugs Sean and Sean gives him a hug back. I need a bit of help off you and there's money involved. Of course, I'll help, but I need to know a bit more about what you need help with. I need your help selling. It can be in Dublin or Drogheda. When do you want me to start? I'll be in touch, here's my number. Sean gave Adam a missed call so he had his number. While Kiva was playing with her cousin, Zana saw them talking. She walked over and asked Adam for a 50 bag. Adam said, come out to the car at me. Do you want ticker cash? What do I look like? Donna said and they both laughed. She reached into her purse and got the money for him. Sean decided to sell his dad's house, leave his job and move down to help his mum in Drada. He moved in with Donna and Kiva. Two weeks later and Sean started to grieve a lot more about his dad. He decided to get a tattoo to bring his dad a lot closer. At Loudink, he gets a tattoo of praying hands with rosary beads with a cross wrapped around the fingers underneath the hands is written dad. After he left Loudink, he took out his phone and called Adam. I'll take over. Adam said, meet me at the back of Kit's May. They arranged to meet at the vacant little bungalow shop with the shutters down, surrounded by rocks and grass. Adam was already parked in the alley in a new black beamer with tinted windows half down, playing Jordan McCann's Trapped in the Slum Slowly. Sean pulled up beside Adam and rolled down his window. Adam spoke first. Will you take over for me because I'm moving away to Spain? I'll send you over shipments to start next week. The guard armed response pulled up outside in the squad car. Get out of the car. They jumped out and took the two of them out of the cars, made a show of them, put them up against the wall and searched them. The guards that were not questioning them searched the car and found drugs inside Adam's car. They arrested him. We have an eye on you now because we've seen you at Adam. Sean drove off.
That's it. That's the whole lot I've done.